Hey, how's it going? We are in Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 10, and uh, we got the millstone here. So, uh, Luke 17, 1 through 10. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep, Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat. Would he not rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Okay, so that one doesn't get preached on a whole lot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, um, we got the, the, the first part, the millstone thing, you know, there's stuff that's going to come into this world that introduces sin, there's evil in this world, it's going to happen, it's bound to happen, but don't be that person that introduces evil into this world, because that's the millstone tied around the neck person, and uh, so God knows how to judge evil, people who bring in evil to, to children, to the least of these uh, don't be that person. And if you are wondering if the evil people are just going to get away with it, they are not. So God is good at understanding what is just and right, and He will bring judgment on those who are bringing evil into this world. Our job is to deal with stuff and forgive. So verse, what is this, verse 3, hap- Yeah, verse 3, so watch yourselves, it says, don't be that, don't be the one that's going to need the millstone. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. So this is our responsibility. If your brother sins, don't just walk away and mutter about it with somebody else. Actually, go to that person, you know, the Matthew 18, go to him, talk to him. Uh, If they won't believe it, get two or three witnesses. If you can't get two or three witnesses, it might be your issue. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, then talk to the leaders in the church and see how to deal with it that way. Um, here, deal with it. Don't just, don't just forgive people without dealing with it. If your brother sins, rebuke him. That's a command from the scriptures. And if he repents, forgive him. So if this happens seven times in a day, go ahead and forgive him seven times. Uh, this isn't the 70 times seven passage, but another time Jesus, you know, they're like, Seven times? How about 70 times seven? Meaning like, don't be counting. Just go ahead and keep forgiving. Um, And then Jesus makes it quite clear here that uh, you're not going to have a party thrown for you for just forgiving people. Um, This is an expectation, not a request. You know, like the servant comes in, waits on the master. The master then says, okay, you're, you're dismissed. You can go take care of your own needs now, and there is no party thrown for the servant. We are the servants. One of the things that can get confusing is when you have a servant's heart and you're trying to serve other people, they can either catch on to that servant attitude and be a servant as well, or they can be like, I'm taking advantage of that, you know, yeah, serve me, you know, and so you can inadvertently create an enabler scenario where the person exploits and takes advantage of you rather than mimicking your uh, servant attitude. So uh, you don't want to, you don't want to be that person who is going to be like, oh, well, you know, God is serving me. He'll forgive me. You know, I get to now just receive of the mercies of God, but I have no responsibilities. No, No, you be a servant too. Take Jesus' servant attitude and his willingness to sacrifice and emulate that rather than try to exploit that or think, 
oh, I don't really have to follow the teachings of Christ. I'll, you know, I'll just rely on the mercy of God and ignore what he's teaching. Here is very clear. No, I'm telling you to forgive people. Correct them and then forgive them. And that's an expectation. So, pretty strong. So, let's pray to confront wisely and to forgive profoundly. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for the counsel of your word. Lord, help us to confront things wisely, to not be foolishly bold, to not be harsh or cruel, to not let things get into a place in our hearts where it comes out funny, but let us deal with things quickly uh, and not in a, in a yucky way, but just telling the truth. And then uh, help us to forgive profoundly. If we are deeply wounded and hurt by certain things, Lord, give us the supernatural spiritual ability of forgiveness to be able to be free from those situations. So, Lord, uh, give us these two things. Guide us in them how to acquire these spiritual skills, the ability to confront wisely and the ability to forgive profoundly. So, Lord, bless us with this. In Jesus' name, amen.